Paul, in trying to understand the reality of religion, I have to look to the promise of the future, not just what's happening today, to get to the bedrock of it. Because every one of the major religions talks something about the future, either in a personal afterlife or of a transformation of the, of the uh, a cosmos in some way. So I have to know whether that's a reality or it's just metaphor. Mm -hmm. So from the Christian point of view, what is the eschatology, the future, supposed to be like? Mm. And how does it affect us, and how does it affect mm. everything else? Mm. Well, you say, is it reality or just metaphor? Of course, metaphor can point to what is real. And if this is a transformation of all things we're thinking about, then this is something totally new, and therefore it can't be examined and measured and easily described out of the tools, the concepts we have in our present existence. Fair enough. The, cha the future in this way is a challenge to the present. It overturns the status quo with something genuinely new. And so it can only be described in terms of metaphor, but it doesn't mean it's unreal. It is pointing to something real. And the great metaphors of Christian faith describe this, for example, that of resurrection. Resurrection is not just about uh, the going, the continuing on of an immortal soul after the body has come to an end. It is about recreation. It's about the recreation of the wholeness of reality, the body, the mind, the spirit. And so it is about the restoration and the recreation of all things which are interrelated to each other. So it's not just the person. in each other. It's the person in the whole context of the physical universe from which the person has emerged. So that's one powerful metaphor in Christian thinking, the resurrection of the body, which is not just individual, but is corporate and is cosmic and is holistic because it involves the whole person. So the whole person is the body the mind and whatever spirituality may be in God, relationship with God. So that person emerges. And how about the, re the rest of what we would think is the inanimate world? Yes. Certainly there will be persons and community and a corporate relationship, yeah. but what about yeah. all yeah. of the other aspects of, of the environment in which we see in the universe and on Earth? Well, remember we can't speak literally about this, but only through metaphor. And it's clear that the human being has emerged from the physical world and is embedded within it. Yes. And therefore, if there is to be a transformation of the human person, this must involve a lifting to a new level. Here, perhaps we're using a metaphor, the lifting <laughs> up to a new level of existence of the whole cosmos in which that person has his or her context. We can't be totally anthropocentric. Uh, the Bible is full of God's relation to the whole of reality. We're told that God makes covenant not just with human beings but with every living thing. Everything has a relation to God and praises God in its own way and gives glory to God in its own way. So we're thinking about the lifting of all of this onto a new level of life and existence which has new possibilities for flourishing within it and uh, new opportunities for the fulfillment of potential. And so, if we look at the universe, we see a hundred billion galaxies, a hundred billion stars. Is that mm. included within this mm. concept, or it's something maybe more limited to the Earth? No, it must be a cosmic reconciliation, just because we know that human beings are embedded not just in the little world in which, which we know, but in fact in the whole of the cosmos. We have a cosmic story the very uh, atoms and molecules that make up our bodies have their origin mm -hmm. in the whole birth of the cosmos. Everything is interrelated in ways that we can uh, hardly begin to discern, but which we can see some fragment of. Perhaps we're not just talking about one universe, perhaps we're talking about many universes uh, which exist out of the creative power of God. So uh, we are thinking about the lifting of everything onto a new level of existence. And why should it have to be lifted? Well, it's because there is a self-destructiveness at the heart of reality as we know it. There is evil, there is 
suffering, there is a failure to reach potential. There is a breaking of relationships. And so the Christian hope is for all this to be renewed. And the symbol of resurrection, it is a metaphor, but nevertheless it expresses this holistic nature of salvation. Another metaphor would be new creation, which speaks about something genuinely uh, new and different from the present. Another is the coming of the kingdom of God, a space for love and justice to be fulfilled. And uh, hoping for that has the power to produce a kind of revolution in the present in which we become dissatisfied with present reality as it is and the way that society runs itself at present. 